In these problems, we're looking at the limits of functions as the variable approaches infinity. So if we look at this one, we have the function s of n, and we've got 5 over 4n cubed, and then multiplied by this. You can think of this second you know, term in the second set of parentheses here as being multiplied by the top. And then we want to figure out what this is when n approaches infinity. So let's think about this in a little bit simpler of a context first. If we have an expression, a rational expression, where the power of x is bigger on top than on the bottom, what happens when this approaches infinity is the x squared term gets much bigger, much faster than the x term. So it's as if this x term pales to insignificance compared to the x squared term because the numbers are getting so big. And when you square a really big number, it gets really, really big. And then, of course, the 1 is, is uh, uh, very insignificant. You may have um, worked on these problems by doing this, uh, multiplying by 1 over x times 1 over x. What that would give you is x over 1 plus 1 over x. And here it's a little easier to see. At infinity, 1 over x, that's going to be 0. And this is going to be infinity. You end up with infinity over 1. The lesson to learn here is that if you have the larger power on top, it's going to equal infinity. If you have the larger power on the bottom, so if I had x plus 1 over x squared, the opposite is going to happen. You're going to have a situation where you end up with 1 over x if we do the same trick we did there. And as x approaches infinity, that would approach 0. So the limit of this as x approaches infinity would be 0. And the limit of this as x approaches uh, infinity would be infinity. Now there's one other case. What if you had 2x plus 1 over 3x? Well, in that case, the 1 pales to insignificance. And the, the x's are both infinities, so it's almost as if they cancel. And so your limit is just going to be 2 thirds. So the limit of this as x approaches infinity is 2 thirds. All right, now let's look at this actual problem. What powers do we have on the top and what powers do we have on the bottom? And really all you have to do is look for the highest power because the rest of them, as you get towards infinity, are going to become insignificant. So if this chunk here is multiplied by the top, we have n to the fourth. And on the bottom, we have n to the third. So the higher power is on top. That means the answer here is that this is, the limit of this is going to be infinity. And that's all there is to that. Let's look at this next one. Same problem. On the top, we have 5 to the 4th as our highest power. On the bottom, we have, sorry, n to the 4th as our highest power. On the bottom, we have n to the 5th. That's the higher power on the bottom. So the limit here would be 0. And here, we have one. This might be a little tricky to sort out first. We have n to the third on the bottom. We have some numbers in here. And then if you count up the n's that are multiplied by each other, you don't have to multiply this whole thing out. You can if you want to. But if you count up the n's that are multiplied by each other, you get n to the third here. So that's an n to the third on the top, n to the third on the bottom. So the powers are equal. We have to sort out the numbers. Now this 4 is multiplied throughout the whole thing too. So we can't forget this 4. So really the numbers that we're looking at are the 64 and the 4 on the top and the 12 on the bottom. And 4 divided by 12, that'd be 1 third. So this really becomes, the limit becomes 64 thirds. So that's a little bit of work with limits as the variable approaches infinity. My name is Larry. I'm a teacher at EdVisions Off Campus. It's an online project-based school in Minnesota. If you're interested, you can check us out at lovethisschool.org. Thanks.